This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Gamers, what a week. A new Switch, GTA 6 leaks, next-gen Witcher updates. It's like clickbait salad. These are the weeks that YouTubers pray to the algorithm gods for. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it as always. I'm your host, Shell Up. Let's get right into the news. Biggest news for the week is, of course, the reveal of the long awaited Nintendo Switch Pro, featuring a faster CPU, more RAM, inbuilt Bluetooth, improved Wi Fi, and support for up to 4K resolution when running in. What? It's got none of those things, but what does it have? A larger kickstand? Are you fucking kidding me? That's right, we didn't get a Nintendo Switch Pro, we got a Switch OLED. More like Switch LeMayo. Hey! Like and subscribe. Okay, jokes aside, this is what the Switch OLED has. A slightly larger screen. It's 0.8 inches larger, and no man would say no to that. It's also an OLED screen, like the PS Vita had 10 years ago. It's got a wider kickstand, a LAN port in the dock, and enhanced audio, whatever that means. It costs $50 more than the current Switch model, and it comes bundled with free disappointment, because this was hardly the Switch hardware announcement we were all hoping for. A huge portion of the blame for this disappointment has to fall on various publications who claim to have had insider knowledge about the upcoming Switch refresh promising it would deliver all the things we ever wanted from Nintendo hardware. I suppose that should have been evidence enough that things weren't going to break our way since when have Nintendo ever given us what we wanted? A portion of the blame though has to go to Nintendo for serving up what is a pretty unnecessary hardware refresh that is still somehow missing basic things. I mean still no Bluetooth in the Switch, for real. The Vita had an OLED screen and Bluetooth 10 years ago, so you can understand why Nintendo's announcement left more than a few people decidedly underwhelmed. There's no point in complaining about it though, it's still gonna sell out, cause you know, Nintendo fans get a Nintendo. What more proof of that? This week, two video game auction records were shattered in quick succession. It started with the sale of a sealed copy of The Legend of Zelda for the NES, which sold at auction for an eye-watering 870,000 US dollars. This was the highest price ever paid for a video game until a few days later, when a sealed copy of Super Mario 64 sold for 1 million 560,000 US dollars. Remember when you traded in all your old 64 games at GameStop for a buck a pop so you could buy a Nintendo DS? Next time that opportunity presents itself, I hope you'll reconsider. By the way, speaking of Nintendo, this story's kind of fucked up. This week, dude in Japan got arrested for selling hacked Breath of the Wild save files. Not pirated versions of the game, mind you, just the save files. Tokyo resident Ichiman Sho was detained by police after selling the hack save data, a business that has netted him $90,000 over the last two years. Now sure, that's a lot of money, but this is crazy. This is the ultimate victimless crime, and now this dude is being charged? For what? Modding a Nintendo game? Jesus, good thing Skyrim wasn't made in Japan or the entire PC community would be in the clink. That's English for prison, by the way. While we're on the subject of hacks, you might have heard about a large-scale hack that affected Apex Legends. Last week, the game was essentially brought to its knees by a hacker who had disabled the ability to matchmake into games, replacing the UI with blocks of text reading, save Titanfall.com, Titanfall is being attacked, so is Apex. This message related to a campaign to get Respawn to address the rampant DDoS attacks that have all but crippled Titanfall 1, with the community long up in arms about the state of the game. Respawn have acknowledged the issue in the past, but it seems like the promised help hasn't arrived. A little unsurprising given that yesterday, Respawn's community coordinator revealed that there were only one to two people at Respawn still working on Titanfall. Now, I don't know if there's a separate team of engineering, technical people, whatever, who are working to solve the hacking and DDoS issue, and they don't count towards this one to two person total, but it's kind of weird how Respawn can wrest control of Apex Legends back in a few hours, but can't get Titanfall 1 under control after a few years. Something about that doesn't quite add up. Either way, the fact that there are only one to two people working on Titanfall right now is a pretty clear indication that we shouldn't be expecting Titanfall 3 anytime soon. Respawn was, of course, founded by Call of Duty creator Vince Zampella, who last year was parachuted in to lead a refreshed and rebranded DICE LA. This week, the studio's new name was revealed, Ripple Effect Studios. Right now, they say they're working on a player-inspired experience for Battlefield 2042 whatever the hell that means, as well as starting work on a yet-to-be-announced project. We likely won't hear much from these guys for the next few years, I guess. All right, Sony Ponies, this block's for you. This week, Sony held another one of its State of Play webinars, and we got a look at a bunch of upcoming titles. Moss 2 was revealed, sequel to one of the most loved VR titles on the market today. 
Arcade Geddon was revealed for PS5 out now in early access. In fact, it's another one of those all ages arena shooters. We seem to get a new one of those each month. Uh, Fist is a 2D beat em up that looks kind of interesting. Hunters Arena Legends has pretty much the worst name since Immortal Phoenix Rising, and it's a PvEVP battle royale game, I think, and it will be available as a PS Plus game next month, so that's nice. We've got more gameplay for Sifu, which continues to look awesome and has now introduced an aging mechanic that kicks in whenever you die, so you get older as your journey progresses. Kind of like Keanu does in each John Wick film. Also, the game got delayed to 2022. Kind of a bummer, but I don't mind waiting. Jet is a beautiful looking exploration game, kind of like No Man's Sky Light. We got a trailer for Lost Judgment, sequel to the Yakuza spin-off, that looked great. There were two main events though. The first was Arcane's Deathloop, a game that looks so great that for once, I'm sad to be on the Bethesda blacklist. From Arcane's excellent level design, to the no one lives forever aesthetic and soundtrack to the time loop mechanic, which I'm always a sucker for. This is shaping up to be the best Microsoft published PlayStation exclusive ever. Yes, look it up. Finally, Kojima revealed more details about the upcoming Death Stranding director's cut. This is a PS5 exclusive and it has, you know, better graphics and more story stuff and some new weapons and blah, blah, blah. I'm probably not going to play this. I mean, I've what a cargo catapult. God damn you, Kojima! Pre-ordered. If you thought that the new Assassin's Creed games were too long, bloated, stuffed with filler and overflowing with microtransactions, then I've got good news for you. You ain't seen nothing yet. This week, Jason Schreier of Bloomberg revealed three words that should never be placed next to each other. Assassin's Creed Infinity. Here's the pitch. Assassin's Creed, but it doesn't end. Ever. It's a live service platform that Ubisoft are currently building that they claim is the future of the Assassin's Creed franchise. They would later go on to confirm all of this was true. The platform is being developed by both Ubisoft Montreal and Ubisoft Quebec, who previously were working independently on their own Assassin's Creed titles so they could be released more regularly, similar to what Activision does with Call of Duty and its studios. From Shry's article, quote, Inspired by smash hits like Fortnite and Grand Theft Auto V, these living online platforms can keep players engaged for years by frequently adding new content or changing the experience in a dramatic way. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the future of Assassin's Creed inspired by Fortnite. Love it. It must be said that a lot of people are rather excited by this news. There is a breed of Assassin's Creed fan who loves everything that Ubisoft have done with the new AC games, and the idea of an evolving platform constantly serving up new experiences in the same mold appeals to them. I've been saying for a long time that Ubisoft was turning Assassin's Creed into the world's first live service RPG, and the fact that they keep doing this is proof that it's working, at least in a financial sense, since this is a big bet that they wouldn't make unless they were really certain it would pay off. Personally, I think this news sucks. I've been critical of the recent AC games since they had so much potential, but they're held back by the blow to the monetization. Assassin's Creed needed more focus, more restraint. It needed a machete taken to huge parts of it. Trimmed down, this franchise could be extraordinary. Headed towards this sort of live service treadmill designed to regularly milk players of their cash, I find few reasons to be excited about this direction. Still, we won't be seeing this new vision for another three years or so, so who knows what might change between now and then. Not much, I'll wager. Pour one out for Assassin's Creed, ladies and gentlemen. The Templars won, and Ubisoft are unironically building the Animus so that we might be trapped there forever. Sad times. The new AC games are of course heavily inspired by CD Projekt Red's The Witcher 3, and this week we got an update on the next-gen version of the game. Given all the drama surrounding Cyberpunk, there was legitimate concern that the update would slip into 2022, but CD Projekt Red tweeted this week that it was still coming this year, complete with new cover art and new content inspired by Netflix Witcher TV series, though no specifics were given on what that content would be, other than some armor. This update will also include 4K, 60fps, a large number of quality of life improvements, and even changes pulled straight from community sourced mods. It's going to be totally free to anyone that's bought The Witcher 3 on Xbox, PlayStation, or PC. Just a reminder that Season 2 of The Witcher hits Netflix on December 17th, just about the time we all start going on holidays. Perfect. Lately, there's been a lot of chatter about GTA 6 and when it should be expected. Recent financial reporting from Take-Two has indicated that it won't be anytime soon, and recent leaks seem to confirm that. YouTuber Tom Henderson claims to have received insider goss on the game, and this information was then confirmed by Jason Schreier, or at least he claims to have heard the same things. Apparently, the game is returning to Vice City, albeit a modern-day version of it, so we can see how the city has changed in the 40 years since Tommy Vassetti first stepped foot onto the tarmac. Part of the pitch is that the city won't 
be static as it is in previous games. It will instead change and expand the same way that a Fortnite map does. It's going to have multiple protagonists again, with at least one being female. The game isn't slated for release until around 2024 or 25, since apparently Rockstar are trying to treat their staff well, since they've copped a lot of flack for that stuff in the past. Again, all of this is just rumors, and we know how well those Switch Pro rumors played out, Point is, take all this with a grain of salt. So, what got announced or delayed this week? Well, let me just say this. Come quietly or there will be... Pause, pause, pause. Trouble! That's right, everybody. They're making a Robocop video game. If you dare acknowledge the existence of that shitty 2014 remake, I will shoot you... We're in a, in a bad place. Like this. <laughs> No, this Robocop game is based on the original 1987 cinematic masterpiece, and if the pedigree of the developers are anything to go by, we should be in for a faithful adherence to the source material. It's being made by Tion, the team who recently made the Terminator Resistance game, which was sort of a critical flop, but audiences absolutely loved it, praising it for its rigid commitment to the world James Cameron built. Robocop is legitimately one of my favorite movies of all time. I unironically believe it is a masterpiece, and I'm unbelievably excited to play this. Please don't let me down, Tion. It's slated for release sometime in 2023. Out of left field, we got a reveal announcement and gameplay trailer for My Friend Pedro Ripe for Revenge. You might remember Pedro from a little while back, a charming Max Payne inspired 2D shooter. Well, it's back, only this time it's mobile. And I know we all turn up our nose at mobile, but this actually looks pretty damn cool. It looks like an actual game that just happens to be on mobile, rather than, you know, most of the mobile trash we end up with. It's available August 5th, free for Android and iOS. Quick announcement I wanted to shout out. This week, Bandai Namco tweeted out some praiseworthy news. Dark Souls 3 was getting an FPS boost for Xbox Series S and X consoles, bringing it up to 60 FPS. It's not the first game to get the bump, and hopefully it won't be the last, though I expect we won't be seeing Sony following suit with Bloodborne buffs anytime soon. Hopefully those Bloodborne PC rumors end up being true. I'll report on those when they look a little firmer, but yeah, there are rumors for Bloodborne coming to PC and PS5 at the end of the year. An announcement for an announcement. This week, Bungie revealed they were hosting a showcase on August 24th to spill the beans on their Witch Queen expansion, which is slated for release early next year. That's all the news I have about that. Please, someone explain to me why I keep playing Destiny. Please, someone, anyone, help me. Finally, this is cool. Doesn't really belong in this section, but heaps of other stuff didn't anyway, so just roll with it. This week, a Kickstarter for a new Xbox peripheral was funded inside of 20 minutes. You know what it was? This thing. Now that you've seen it for like half a second, don't you want to buy it? I do, for real, this looks awesome. The Xbox Series S is so small and light, and this product just makes sense, and it reminds me of the amazing PS1 flip screens from back in the day, which I had, and they were totally awesome. Anyway, I'm buying this, you can't stop me. I spend my allowance how I like, you're not my real dad. Wait, what? So, what came out last week? Well, not much except for Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin. This one has ticked all the boxes, critically, user scores, and commercially, making it another huge win for Capcom. Critically, it's sitting at around 81 critic score and 84 user score on Metacritic. I reviewed it, I loved it, I recommend it. I'll leave a link to my review in the description below. Commercially, believe it or not, this was the most successful JRPG launch in Steam's history, since Stories 2 hit over 30,000 concurrent users, beating the previous record held by Persona 4 Golden, and before that, Final Fantasy XV. Now don't get me wrong, I really like Monster Hunter Stories 2, but it's nowhere near one of the greats of the JRPG genre, and if it's able to achieve these sorts of numbers, imagine if Steam could get Final Fantasy VII Remake, or Persona 5, or Xenoblade, or Fire Emblem. I know at least some of those are never going to happen, but these numbers certainly should be something for JRPG publishers to think about the next time they're planning their release strategy. So what's coming out this week? Well, first up, Space Jam A New Legacy hits PC and Xbox on the 15th. This looks pretty bare bones. It's a 2D side-scrolling beat-em-up with some pretty basic pixel art. Something about the color palette just looks a little off to me. This is a free perk for Game Pass Ultimate subscribers, by the way. Like, it's not a part of normal Game Pass, it's a perk specific to Ultimate, and it's not like renting it as part of the subscription. It's actually like you get a free code for it and you keep it forever. So yeah, you can grab it if you have Ultimate. F1 2021 hits all platforms except Switch on the 16th of July. I know nothing about this, and I never will because car racing games are not my jam, but F1 in particular, 
No, thank you, sir. A little too glamorous for my tastes. Biggest release of this week is, of course, the 60 US dollar, slightly improved, but also now includes monetized fast travel, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Among the least loved entries in the Zelda series, Skyward Sword is getting a second bite of the cherry and of your wallet, as Nintendo continue their brazen pricing strategy to charge full price to re-release games you may or may not have played when they first released on the Wii or Wii U. My prediction for this? It will be the top-selling game for July, and probably August. Thanks, Nintendo fans. Put this on your radar. This is Boomerang X, and it's a title I covered in this very section a few weeks back, but I wanted to bring it up again because this week I played through it, and it's great. It's really short, and it would have been tough for me to make a full video out of it. So this is the compromise, a brief shout out to what is a very worthwhile title. Boomerang X is an arena shooting gallery game where you're dropped into weird spaces and you have to zip around with the help of your boomerang, which is actually a glaive, mind you. And that's it, you just kill things for three hours or so, and then it's over. But those three hours serve up some truly excellent encounter and level design. It's hard to do this one justice inside of three paragraphs, so go and check out some gameplay, go read some reviews. Everyone who took a chance on this has come away pleased that they did. So yeah, have a look at it. It's out on Switch and PC right now. I'll leave a link to the Steam page below. Sort of free stuff time, let's kick it off with Game Pass. Since it got a low-key refresh this week, the Medium and Dragon Quest Builders 2 are on their way to xCloud, while UFC 4 makes its way to Xbox consoles only. For xCloud, console and PC, you can expect Tropico 6, Farming Simulator 19, and the excellent Blood Roots. If you haven't checked this one out yet, I really recommend doing so. It's kind of like Hotline Miami if it was set in... Canada. Epic is giving away free games as usual. Right now you can still grab Portal Bridge Constructor and the Match 3 Ironcast. But on the 16th it'll tick over to Abduction, a puzzle adventure game from the same people who made Myst, as well as Offworld Trading Company. It's economic warfare as Elon's mission to colonize Mars has been successful and the titans of industry all vie for dominance by trying to create economic monopolies. So basically exactly what's happening on Earth right now. One platform we don't talk about much is PS Now, PlayStation's hybrid answer to both Game Pass and xCloud. Its library of games is slowly growing, this month adding Judgment, Neo 2, Red Dead Redemption 2, and God of War to the list among others. The service is worth paying attention to since it lets you play select PlayStation exclusives on PC so long as the service is available in your country, your internet is good enough, and the game isn't too dependent on input latency. That's a lot of ifs, so you can understand why the service isn't more talked about. Anyway, I'll keep you updated on how its library is progressing. Our feel-good story for the week is just top shelf, triple S tier feels, brought to you by everyone's favorite cat boy dating simulator, Final Fantasy XIV. Since the Shadowbringers expansion last year, Final Fantasy XIV has been at the center of the MMORPG conversation, especially since WoW seems to continue comprehensively shitting the bed. I saw that Jailer cinematic. My God, what the hell is going on over a blizzard? Anyway, interest in Final Fantasy XIV has never been higher, with the developers revealing this week that pre-orders for their upcoming Endwalker expansion are up 180% versus pre-orders for the previous expansion. Big news. Interest in the game was supercharged by the arrival of Gold, World of Warcraft's biggest and most popular streamer by a country mile, and also one of Blizzard's most forthright critics. After years of putting it off, Asmund has finally started streaming Final Fantasy XIV to his audience, and the numbers he's hitting are madness. Like 200,000 concurrent viewers watching Asmund do the 1 to 80 level grind. Just incredible. This perfect storm of factors resulted in FF14 smashing its highest ever concurrent player count on Steam, with over 58,000 people playing at the same time. And that's just Steam, mind you. That doesn't include people who play the game using the Square Enix launcher or those who play on PlayStation. These numbers are even more mind-boggling when you realize that this is a content drought for FF14. There's nothing going on right now. No new story content or raids, and there won't be anything until November of this year when the next expansion launches. The craziest news of all, though, is that yesterday, owing to the fever pitch hype for Final Fantasy XIV right now, the game literally sold out of digital copies on the Square Enix storefront. They ran out of digital codes to sell, and servers were so full for a time that you couldn't even create new characters on any NA server. Absolute insanity. If you're wondering why this is a feel-good story, it's because the dev team and the community of this game are just amazing, one of a kind. The redemption arc this game has gone through has been incredible to watch from its cataclysmically bad launch to being literally the most played and most talked about MMO in the world right now. They listened to their players, they cared about their characters, they created an experience that was about enjoyment, not about monthly active users and time spent in game metrics. 
it's just a wholesome story, and I love it when stuff like this happens. Anyway, did you know that Final Fantasy XIV actually has a free trial that includes the entirety of A Realm Reborn and the award- Yeah, you, you probably know by now. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the week in Vidya. I thank you for stopping by, always a pleasure to have you here. I've got some previews and reviews coming out this week, so if you're keen to see those, or just more this week in video games, then be sure to hit the like button, uh, the subscribe button, the notification bell, that sometimes helps. Thank you for watching, and a big thank you to this video sponsor, Skillshare. Before we go, this video was brought to you by Skillshare. Now, let's say, for example, you work in, I don't know, finance, and you're crushing it right now. You're rolling in cash, riding high off your game stonk wins. But maybe you look out the window and you think to yourself, is this all there is? Maybe you want to be a writer, or a photographer, or a video games YouTuber. If this is you, then Skillshare is the perfect place to begin your journey into a new career or hobby. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, and more. On Skillshare, millions of members come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare's courses are put together by experts in their field, and taking part in them allows you to connect with those creators and other students. You get to build a community around the thing you're passionate about supercharging your ambition and creativity. To get started, click the link in the description below. And as an added bonus, the first 1,000 people that click the link get two months of Skillshare Premium free. Thanks Skillshare for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching it. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down so I know to do better for next time. If you enjoyed yourself, consider subscribing. And if you really enjoyed yourself, maybe consider hitting that notification bell so you never miss a video. You can see my patrons here on the left. They're awesome. They're amazing. If you want to join them, check out my Patreon page. Thank you again. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.